you know, I don't believe in the new year. <laughs> you don't even believe in it. Yeah. yeah, I don't even believe in it. It's a it's a construct. It's just... Well, the new year is sort of bullshit. It is arbitrary. Yeah, like who decided? Patriarchy decided that we're going to start exactly on January 1st and end on December 31st. And forever, that will be the rule of the land. Yeah, capitalism, patriarchy. And we're all trying to dismantle that. So that can also look like changing the way we plan. Exactly. And in this case, I recommend, because I'm an astrologer, that you plan it according to your birth chart. And by the way, I am not an astrologer, astrologer, nor am I somebody who's typically all that woo woo. And we've already had a few conversations that have made me realize astrology is not what I always thought it was, which is about like fortune telling and reading in the newspaper, like who's going to love me when it's about how I show up in the world. It's one of many tools that are out there about how you show up in the world, but knowing how you view the world, your lens, the way that you do things that feels natural and good for you changes everything, including how you approach goal setting and planning. Exactly. And then with that being said, there is a wonderful trick about astrology. It's that many people dismiss it. Therefore, there might be some power to it. It's a dismiss. It's in that dismission. Dis- is that a word? Dismiss- uh, dismissiveness that we that uh, there might actually be a secret there that we can uncover to really unlock the potential of what astrology can do in our life and impact in terms of planning. Well, and from the feminist perspective, as you talk about it being dismissed, I just want to throw in the thing I always do, which is who taught you that? Who made us think that astrology was frivolous and silly and something just fun that, you know, wait ladies do in their pastimes or whatever? And I think when we think about that, we can start to think, ah, maybe, maybe there's a reason why we were led to believe (laughs) this is something that's frivolous and maybe it's not. And maybe there's actual power in that knowledge. So if that excites you, if the thought of that gets you kind of excited, or if you're like me and you're less woo, but you're just like December 31st, I have to have everything planned out by then. That does not feel good. And I can't figure out why it doesn't feel good. I just know it's not for me. Like I don't try to have my whole life thought out or my whole 2024 thought out by January 1st feels really awful, but I can't figure out why. Then maybe it's worth giving it a shot to think about, is there a different way? Yeah. And then not to mention the odds are against you that your year would even start on January 1st and end exactly on December 31st. I did like a rough estimate. And if we were to divide it one out of 365 days in which you could be born at the exact time that it requires you to fall into that small little narrow window, it's it's minute. It's not even a, it's not even 1%. It's less than 1%. It's like point two seven percent chance so that means there's like 99 percent of you who are watching this <laughs> who are saying december 31st or january 1st to have everything ready and figured out doesn't feel good i don't feel ready it doesn't feel right and i'd like to do it a little differently this year i want to plan in a way that actually feels really good for me and that feels like it's actually about my unique way of being in the world so if that's you join us on December 6th. By the way, we didn't say who we are. I'm Becky. I'm Becky Mollenkamp. I'm an accountability coach. I'm the person who is the like more of the practical, strategic in theory, although I think you're also very practical and strategic, (laughs) but I'm not the astrologer. I'm the one who's coming at this from the place of like, I love planning, but I have over the years also gotten to the place of recognizing that everyone plans differently. I used to think everyone should plan the way I do. It doesn't work for everybody. And after you and I have talked more, Babs, I have realized That is because we are not all the same. (laughs) And so I'm excited to pair up with you. Tell them about you real quick. Yeah, so uh, that's a great intro. My name is Babs Chung. I'm an astrologer and my bread and butter is helping people understand that they can potentially plan their life according to their birth chart, which is, it sounds very complicated, but it's really not. The, if you think about a birth chart or your natal chart, if you've ever seen it, it cut It is a circle and it has four distinct quarters. And if you think about the year, and especially if you're a business person, you'll understand your fiscal quarters to also be aligned with the four quarters of the year. And so when we take those two principles and we overlap them, what we have is cosmic fiscal quarters. And so if you'll join us in this conversation that we're having on December 6th, um, you'll really get to understand what it is 
that we're here to kind of shift within planning as a whole. Yeah. And it's not even that it's a, it's both a simple, but also kind of radical shift in the way we think about planning. It's simple in that it, all it is really doing is adjusting kind of how you think about your calendar and time, but it's radical in that it's prioritizing you and your needs first. And that is not what traditionally happens with one size fits all planning, which usually has been created by a privileged white man. <laughs> to say, this is how we do it. <laughs> and if that's not you, or it just doesn't feel right. And again, for 99% of you, it probably doesn't, then this could be the answer. So I hope you'll join us. We're going to talk all about how you can use astrology, simple astrology. It's not like we're asking you to be an astrologer, uh, to change the way you approach planning in a way that really will feel good for you. That is the goal. And we hope to have a fun conversation, come with questions, because we'll have plenty of time to make this a true discussion. We're going to share some stuff, but also want to encourage you to join in. Anything else you want the people to know, Babs? There's a better way. And hopefully we can at least present one to two possible new ways to do things better. Yeah. And it's free. Mm -hmm. So if it feels good to you, come. If you have some friends and business buddies that would also benefit, send this along to them too. And we will try to make it fun. Babs is the fun one or the young one. And <laughs> You're the, fun too. Shut up. You're fun. <laughs> I'm the less fun, less young one, but not old and not not fun. So apparently that's viral. All right. So the sign up link will be included with wherever you're watching this really silly rambly video. <laughs> Thank you all for watching and hopefully we'll see you on the 6th.